Perfect. So thank you guys so much for joining today. I really appreciate your time. We're definitely coming into our biggest month next month. It is, can be absolutely amazing. So I want you to dream as big as you can possibly dream about what your paycheck will look like on December 9th, which will be our next paycheck after you're working all day November or on all month in November. What will that look like? And what are you going to do with that? Are you going to pay for your Christmas cash? Pay off some debt? Are you going to pay for a trip for your family? What is that massive paycheck gonna look like to you? So I want you to write down what you would your ultimate dream paycheck would be at the end of November. And it, um, and then um, what, how many sales you would like to have in the month of November. So if you'd like to shatter a record that you've ever sold before. So in November and December, we are going to be um, having, uh, let's see here, let's get these pieces of it for you. Um, uh, it's going to be called free for all. So what free for all is, is that for every amount, for every certain dollar amount sold, you get the new spring product shipped to you for free. So surely if you sell over 800 or over a thousand, you get level one. If you sell over 2000, you get level two. If you sell over three thirty-five hundred, 3,500, you get level three. So just it completely depends on what they're going to come out with. But it is so exciting to get those new spring products shipped to your door. And I've seen them. They are insane. You definitely want to work towards those. So in order to reach all of those goals, of course, we need to have bookings. So bookings are the lifeblood of our business. Without bookings, we don't have a business. Um, so just remember to those scripts that I've posted in team sale, a good trick is to go A to Z down your friends list, or I just wanted to share my screen with you guys and show you another good way to pinpoint people who are online so that I can, so I'm going to share my screen here. Perfect. So, cause sometimes we, uh, when you fall into habit of contacting all the same people and we're not contacting new people. So I'm just going to show you here with, my Facebook, how to kind of find different people to message. So if you go under chat, the chat window, uh, and then if you go see all in messenger, this is how to do it from your computer, from your phone, it looks a little different. I can post a screenshot. So let's just bring it up messenger here for us. And then, I believe it's this button over here. It'll, I believe it says show, so active contacts. So it's the little settings wheel and then active contacts. So we call this green dot challenge. When you click on active contacts, oh, so there we go. So I have 263 people that are active. And this brings up the strangest people that I have forgotten I'm even friends with on Facebook or that, because um, sometimes when we click on friends, it'll bring up all the people we generally contact. So I just go through here. Anytime I, I'm relaxing or say I'm waiting in a waiting room or I'm watching TV, I'm generally going through and messaging people for bookings. I wish that we could change our Facebook status and be like, this special in November is 60% off anything. Who wants to have a party? I wish that that would work and people would just be like, I do, I do, I do. But unfortunately, it doesn't. I don't know if you've seen my post today that I posted. I said, if you were to get a 60% off coupon, for anyone, any Pampered Chef product, what would it be? So now I'll post a script of what I'm going to message those people, but I'm going to go back and be like, that's actually the host special in November. All you need is $200 in sales and you're able to choose anything in the catalog for 60% off. So I know a lot of people were posting they wanted the quick cooker at 60% off. Well, when they host in the month of November, they can get it for 120 bucks. So that's like even cheaper than an Instapot, but way better than an Instapot. And then same with the blender. If they were to host, they get it for $179. So I'm just going to go and follow up with all those people. So as we say, the fortune is in the follow-up. So I'll be following up with those. Same with you. If you post a picture of yourself, like holding a catalog, you're like, who wants a catalog? You can mail them a catalog and then make sure to follow up with it and be like, I'd love to do a party with you. Uh, did you receive your catalog? 
Uh, would you like me to send you some more? You could pass them around, do a catalog show, things like that. I'm just gonna go stop share. All right. So um, another thing that you can uh, ask people, so of course we're talking about virtual parties and the reason we're talking about virtual parties so much is that never before in my career have we been able to have somebody join and then say right the next day, okay, perfect, we're starting your show. It used to be, let's find a date that works, four weeks have gone by, we get started. So it's super exciting right now because people can literally start today um, and then start their first virtual party tomorrow. I will be doing a November template for virtual parties, so it'll be a little different, so you guys can have something different there for you. And the reason that we say at least four parties in a week, or at a time of a, row, of a grouping of, of a virtual parties, is so that you can, um, it's the same average as it would be for a normal party, kind of. So one might be a flop, so one might be zero dollars, one might be only 200 bucks, one might be 800 bucks or a thousand, but if you just did the one that was a flop, you're gonna be like, man, these virtual parties suck. They are not very much fun at all. So that's why I recommend doing at least four at once because it's just inevitable that one might be zero because you might have a host that is not that interactive. So as we've learned, the biggest way in order to make a uh, successful virtual party is having a host that's engaged. So they need to be doing at least one post a day. I've also been finding some really good um, uh, interaction with people when I've been going live. So the more you can go live in your virtuals, the better, because it immediately gives every single person a notification that you're, um, you're going live and it brings them back to the party. So last night I was using the quick slice and I was just slicing some hard boiled eggs and I had a whole bunch of people add the quick slice to the order that they already had put in um, or placing orders that night. So whenever you're using a Pampered Chef tool, try and go live as much as you can. And then it kind of brings a face to a name and makes it a little bit more personal as well. And if you're finding that, you know, four parties, ah, that's quite a bit. I did just wrap up my first block party. So that would be putting four hosts in one party. And um, it, it was so funny because it was exactly what we always say. I had five hosts in there. One party was zero. One was 200, actually the other one was zero two, one was a thousand and one was 700. So complete mix, so two zero parties in there. But you could just tell, they were the ones who, I would send them their host task and I would kind of rotate, I would send two host tasks per day. So it kind of made it easier for the host because they didn't have to post every day. It worked out to like every second or third day that they had to put in a post. And it um, was the same thing where um, the, the hosts who did not participate were the ones who had the lower parties. So we can even create some images. I know that Courtney's done a few of those. I should try and do some as well, some screenshots. It's like, if you, I want this to be as fun and as successful as possible for you. And that means joining in and participating with your, um, with the block party. And the more that you participate, the better the sales are going to be. You'll see on Team Sale, I also posted today some great host coaching stuff for um, what to say to your hosts. You can kind of make them even compete. So you can create a one group message for your hosts and be like, leaderboard, uh, this uh, Susan's party has nine orders, Cheryl's party has eight orders. You can kind of get them competing against each other, which is kind of neat. And then uh, you can say to them, um, you can also put out a booking challenge for them. So this makes your life a lot easier instead of trying to book all these people for your, you know, messaging every single person. You could be like, okay, tell me which one of your friends loves to shop for free or loves using coupons. Who's always the one who's finding all the deals? Okay, perfect. I'm gonna put a challenge out for you to ask her to have a party. So I want you to put out this challenge to at least 10 people. And if you get three parties booked for me, I'm going to give you something off your wish list worth $30. So you're incentivizing your host to get the bookings for you. And the first few times I did this, I was like pretty nervous because I'm like, ah, I feel like this is kind of something that I should be doing. And they were all over it. They're like, oh yeah, I know exactly who would be an awesome host. Um, I know exactly which one of my friends would be great. So they kind of get excited by challenges as well. So that's a great way to get 
bookings out of a, a virtual party or out of a block party. In your virtual parties, you want to make sure you're talking about the business. And sometimes I, it, it's definitely in my template that we have there, but sometimes I'll forget them or, you know, be like, I don't know if this crowd's going to be interested, but it makes such a big difference. You want to make sure they know that the kits are on special this month and that all of them are on sale, which we've never seen before. You want to make sure that people know the earning potential. So you can do the guess my paycheck one. And then you can also do the apron one that says, ask me anything and have people asking uh, which uh, questions for you. And if you're unsure of an answer that somebody asks you, just screenshot it and we can send an answer for you to do that as well. All right. So we do have a little bit of time left, like seven days left in this month to get some sales. So what are some ideas that you guys have of ways to round up some sales in the next seven days? Have you done like any of the booking challenges in the sense of like the new Christmas stuff that's coming out? You know, gone on there and featured about like the gingerbread houses, but don't just uh, like this is I think where I'm getting in trouble on Facebook. Don't post a product and say thirty dollars. Just show yourself using something like Andrea had used, and get there and do your live videos and do your different things of your day to day pampered chef life on Facebook. But don't make it salesy. Right. So you're kind of creating a brand on social media. So yeah. you want to kind of do a, a personal post about yourself and then you want to do a post about you making a recipe or I just made this amazing mm -hmm. recipe. So you're kind of creating a brand where you're not being too salesy. Ginny's amazing at this. I've posted in the team page a few times, but she'll be actually posting a recipe. She'll lay out all her ingredients, take a picture of it. And then as the in, uh, recipe goes and there, she uses all Pamper Chef recipes, it's amazing visual storytelling. So that's a great way to do it too. But when you're in your virtual parties, it sounds really weird, but you want to try and friend the people in the parties. So then if you put up a special, like, yeah, I'm doing the popcorn maker, $30 all in, makes a great stocking stuffer who wants one. These are the people that are going to jump out and um, ask yeah. you to book or, that, you know, be like, I want a popcorn maker. So make sure to be friending all of the guests in your virtual parties, or you can start with the people who order and move along from there. You'll get tons of extra orders down the road from these people. What other ideas? Seven days left to maximize the last few days. Simple ones like look at your Facebook community sites and advertising that way, like whatever's going on in your community and thinking of a certain designated audience. Like I know that some of um, my team members are taking certain product categories, like maybe it's baking stuff, right? And featuring kind of a collection together and then inviting them to like their VIP page or business page, whatever it may be. And then that's where you're going absolutely explosive posting way too much. Right. Post in your private pages, post in your groups, but don't go throwing up all over Facebook. Yeah, you can say I'm putting in a bulk order of cookie scoops. Cookie scoops sell like crazy right now. So that's a good idea. Another good one I really like to do is a mystery host party. And you can do these with just it's a few days left in the month. So say you're doing a Halloween mystery host or a uh, Christmas shopping mystery host and you'd create a group uh, add your friends and family, run it like a normal virtual party. And the um, for, what I like to do is for every $10 they spend, they get one draw into all the free stuff. So if they spend a hundred bucks, they're gonna have 10 entries into the free stuff. And then people place orders and at the very end, say the um, host benefits are $170, you're gonna go live and draw $170 host um, host credits and it is so much fun you can really post on your Facebook uh, what the host credits are up to and oh my goodness we just got our host credits up to 220 bucks I always say to people can't win if you don't have a ticket you better place your order I don't know if you guys have seen but the um, the Disney products are all on sale right now so those ones are on sale the um, the quick the meal starter sets are all on sale so advertise those sales and the outlet has been updated. So if you go on your website, you'll see that there's a sales section on your website and there's some incredible sales on there right now. We have some of our forged cutlery, some of our stainless cookware. So you can tell people, um, check out my website. I'm putting in a uh, bulk order from my outlet 
and would you be interested in ordering something from there? Any other ideas for how to round up some sales for the last seven days? I really like uh, workshops are fun, especially this time of year. So you could do things like a snack bar workshop where everyone would purchase the snack bar, bar maker kit. Maybe one other tool like the baker's roller is a great way to press the snack bar maker stuff in, in there. So that one's a fun one. And then everybody can come over and make a few recipes um, at your place. Or another, our freezer meal workshops are huge. Um, I, I love freezer meal workshops because I'm like, I don't really know a way better than being able to sell $1,000 in a day than a freezer meal workshop. So for that one, we have seven different menus for them to choose from. Uh, their package would have some spices and some products, and then everybody gets together to complete their meals. So that's a really good one too. Oh my gosh, my cat. <laughs> um, and then what other ones? Uh, my, one of my favorite, if you know anybody who works in an office, one of my favorites is a salad in a jar workshop. Um, you can do this at your house in the evening or on a weekend. You could do a salad in a jar brunch. But a salad in a jar uh, show would be just the same as a normal cooking show. You would set it up in stations. So one person would be spiralizing. One person would be using like the quick slice. One person would be grating the cheese. And then once all that prep is done, everyone brings a mason jar and fills their jar. And then you can make a quick appetizer. Uh, for, so if you're in an office, my favorite is the creamy Brussels sprouts dip. Oh man, even if you don't like Brussels sprouts, you love this dip. It is unreal. And it's made in seconds in the microwave in the rock crock. People go crazy for that one. But it's still, um, you want to, as long as you're setting your goals or writing down what you're looking for for sales in the month of November, or even from now till October 31st, like I know I'm trying to bridge some gaps still, so I'm still looking to start some virtual parties to, on Saturday and close them by Wednesday. So don't feel like you can't start a virtual party now and close it by the end of the month. There still is tons of time. Remember that the most common response you're gonna get to a virtual party ask is no response. That is the most common thing that you're gonna hear. And don't feel like you're failing. That's just the way that social media is these days. So then you can go back to them again and send a funny gif, like I send funny ones like that, or like a little smiley face. And then often people will be like, oh, I meant to respond to this, but I was driving or I was out and about. So don't feel like you can't follow up with those people. And I personally would way rather receive a hard no than a no response. So if somebody's like, oh yeah, yeah, no, I saw your message, I'm not interested. I'm like, perfect, check, next. So you're trying to, I'm just gonna hold a little cat out one sec. So we say, one of the things we like to say is going for a no. So you're almost looking forward to a no. So you're trying to track how many no's that you're getting. So once you get to 10 no's, you give yourself a little reward. So for example, going and getting a nice coffee in your house or getting to take a bubble bath, you get another 10 no's, you get to do something fun. Say you get like 70 knows you get to buy a pair of shoes, <laughs> but it really helps to give yourself little incentives along the way because then you're not so emotional when you're getting the nose. I used to get knows a lot and then I'd kind of go, ah, you start to really start to feel, you know, defeated. But if you, if your emotion is the same, every single no you get, whenever I hear no, I just think next. Uh, or I think, are you crazy? Like, why would you not want to host a virtual party or a party with me? I'm going to come cook for you and you're going to get a ton big shopping spree. And if, you know, a virtual party, you're on Facebook anyways, you might as well be, uh, you might as well be getting a shopping spree for that. Because along getting all those no's, you're going to start to get some yeses as well. So the more you can take the emotion out of the no, even out of the yes, so you don't go crazy when you get a yes. I used to do that too. I used to get so excited. But if you can just keep your emotion kind of even keeled, that will really help you deal with all the no's. That's the, probably the most common part of our, of our business and why people don't last so long sometimes is that we do hear no a lot. And that's just part of our business. Um, and don't feel defeated or feel like you're failing because of that. That's definitely part of what we do. So roller coaster, but the ups are definitely worth the downs, hey Jill? <laughs> it's crazy. 
<laughs> so another thing you'll notice uh, around your neighborhoods too is you can try to sign up for some Christmas craft fairs. This is the Christmas craft fair time of the year. So you can call some community halls or churches in your area to see if they're doing any Christmas craft fairs or uh, just even Google uh, vendors wanted in your neighborhood that you're in. And this is a great way to get outside your friend and family circle. Uh, one party that I did, when I first started, I could not get a booking for me. I had a really hard time getting started. And um, my mom didn't even host a show for me and still hasn't, a little bit of a sore point there. But one of the things I did that really got me started was I, I did a, a, a brunch show, a neighbor's brunch show. So I printed off invites and I went door to door and I invited people. I, the trick was I knocked on the door and said, I'm doing a Meet the Neighbors Pampered Chef brunch. I'd love for you to come. I'm going to be giving away some prizes. We're going to have some great food. And Jenna actually did this too. She had uh, almost a thousand dollar party. Actually, way over a thousand dollars. Yay! Like twelve hundred dollar party because her neighbor bought a quick cooker set. So pretty exciting. And when I, I did mine too, only I, I knocked on a ton of doors. About five people came, and one of the people spent a thousand dollars, and it's still my best customer to this day. So it's like we always say, there's no growth in your comfort zone and no comfort in your growth zone. So it was difficult to make those invites and knock on those doors, but man, it totally launched my business. And it was funny because the next year I'm like, well, everybody knows me. I knocked on the doors. I introduced myself last year. I'm just going to leave little newsletters on everybody's doorstep. Nobody came. So those, it just goes to show, I kind of think of when people do a status update, this, the post special is this this month. It's almost like you're leaving a newsletter on someone's doorstep to personally invite people. You can also go through your uh, text contacts and be like, look, I'm really trying to launch my business or I'm working on a special goal. This is the best time of year to host. One of the reasons that people are nervous to host, there's two reasons. One <laughs> is they're scared to disappoint you. So the number one reason that people will cancel on you is they feel like they're going to disappoint you. They feel like they're not going to have enough people, they're at the party for you, or they're not going to get enough sales for you. So I'm always trying to calm my host down, like, don't worry, especially with virtual parties. I'm like, you didn't have to put on a bra or clean your house. Don't worry about it. Um, it's going to be super fun. If, if it doesn't, if no one orders, it, you know, I didn't have, you didn't have to do any of those things. And then if it's a live party, I like saying to people, you know, I don't care if you haven't sent out any invites yet. I know your party's only a week away, but um, this is the perfect amount of time to let people know about the party. Everyone knows what they're doing next week. The, so that's the first reason people will cancel on you. Uh, the second reason people will cancel on you, what is it here? Those, they feel like they're gonna disappoint you. And Jill, help me out here. I'm trying to think of the other reason. They're not going to have any sales. Their friends won't come. Yeah, their friends won't come. They feel like they're going to disappoint you. And um, another just, one is which, sorry? Oh, I'm just trying to remember. Like, I, I just think back to, like, that December 9th, my show that I booked with you, and I just about canceled because I have five coming. You're like, let's go forward with it. Yes. I remember, like, I just hosted a party recently. In the back of my head, I kept thinking, oh, I can always just cancel on her if nobody wants to come. That's exactly what people are kind of uh, thinking in their ho how head when they um, uh, yeah. have, thinking of having another block party. That's a great idea, having people over to do Christmas shopping. If you know somebody else who sells something, so somebody else who sells Tupperware or jewelry, you can also do a show switch. So it'll be like, I'll do a show for you with all my friends, and then you all come, um, and then you can do a show for me with all of my friends. That's one of the ways that I used to get bookings back in the day when I was looking to, you know, we all know somebody who sells something offered to do a show switch or even like a little mini market in your house is super fun. You can offer to invite a <coughs> to sell things over to, at, to your house and then people come to shop. It's like a one-stop shop. Oh, I remembered the other reason. The other reason people uh, will cancel on you is they feel as though their friends are not going to have fun or they're going to be pressured. So we always want to let our hosts know that you are helping your friends by having a party. I have so many people who come to parties and say, I am so glad that the host Susan had this party. Now I don't have to go to the mall and uh, 
Christmas shop. I hate going to the mall. Or man, I was able to buy gifts for my, for my entire team with this party. That has saved me so much time. So you always want to keep your host knowing that your friends are going to appreciate that you had the party and that um, they're going to have a fun time and they're going to really thank you for having this party. People, hosts are often worried that they're going to pressure their friends. You guys probably heard that before. Oh, I don't want to, pre I don't want to pressure my friends. When I say to people, you're not pressuring your friends. Like everybody needs to eat. Everybody needs great kitchen tools. And you'll find that people, uh, your guests will love the fact that, you know, because we don't have enough Pampered Chef people. The most common thing we hear is that they haven't seen it in 20 years or they've never seen it before. You're helping your friends out. When you see your mentality from, I'm doing a party for you, to, um, you know, like the hosting. I always say to my host, I'm doing a party for you. I'm going to change your kitchen forever after having this cooking show or this virtual party. Love that. Thank you. So are there any other ideas for maximizing the last day of October? You did see that donut pan challenge. That's a really good one. Have you followed up with all your guests to say thanks for coming to the show or you're sending everybody the recipes right away after? Oh yeah, that's a good call. Yeah. So the, after a live cooking show, I always send out a thank you email that says, thank you so much for coming and recipes. And I also put at the bottom, we're going to be keeping the show open for a few more days. If there's any of your friends and family that need any kitchen tools or you'd like to add, and I have tons of people adding stuff after the fact. So that's a great way. And you also want to go back and follow up with, I'm just going to show you guys here on my screen how to uh, take a peek at the invited people on your, um, your, let's see here, on your parties. So let's go to my block party. Okay, so here's my blocked people on Facebook. No, not that. <laughs> block party. I didn't even know that was a thing to search. Last day. This is a cool idea too. When you're doing your virtuals, you can actually change the name of the actual party. So I'll change the name of my party to like two days left, Pamper Chef Block Party, last day, so that they're getting that notification as well. So here's my block party. And I'm going to show you how we can find out how many members were invited. I'm going to click on members and I was really happy to happy to see because um, when the party's wrapping up uh, we always get our hosts to directly message all of the guests who attended and said hey thank you so much the cl show's closing tomorrow here's the link to order but then I go through and directly message all of them too and I was happy to see that you'll see underneath members you'll see it says added by so you know whose guests are who, which is nice. Because I was like, how am I going to know who the heck? Um, but you'll be able to see invited. Oh, man, how do I do this from my phone, from my computer? I'm always doing it from my phone. Let's see. Also, the block party worked out pretty good, hey? Yeah, it was, all, it was exactly the same as, so if I click on members, exactly the same as a normal party. Just way less work on my end, so I had time to do other things. I'm just looking, oh, here we go, invited. Right invited and then so he, look at 298 invited that's actually not very good I was looking I was on a call this morning and they most of their parties have like 1500 invited and about 150 join that's their average so you want to really coach your hosts to invite minimum 150 even 200 is even better because only 10 percent or so of the people invited are actually going to join the group so 298 were invited and 78 joined in and of that i'd probably say like 15 ordered so that kind of gives you a percentage but all these people who were invited you can now click on them and be like okay who okay she was friend of nancy who is one of the hosts i'm going to message her and say hey um thanks for uh i know you weren't able to play along with our virtual party that we had going on um for nancy but i am booking into november i was wondering if you'd be interested in hosting to get your own, to get a shopping spree of your own so now i have 298 people that i can message for that so that's why when we say that it only takes one virtual party to get you going on virtuals that's why so we can go in here and message all these people 
Another little trick that some of the Americans do too is they'll um, say, I've, they'll take a look at every single person who's actually involved in the party. So all of the actual members, the 78 members, and they'll send like a, um, a number to their inbox and be like, check your inbox. If you got number six, you have a gift coming your way. So what you're doing is you're establishing, because you know how you're not friends, if you're not friends with Facebook, you often won't see the posts, um, that you won't see the direct messages that you send somebody. So if you start games like that, or if you're doing like a video for your virtual party, you can like say, um, in your video, you'll be like, the secret word is kitchen sink. And then if, and then you'll say in your video, whoever directly messages me kitchen sink will go into a draw for a free product. So then that's getting people to look into their inbox and start those conversations with you. So the next time you message them, they'll actually be able to see them. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. All right. <clears throat> oh, Jenna runs a game and she gets them to direct message you the answers. That's a great way to do it. Love it. So I'm just gonna open it up to questions now. We kind of covered Set a goal and write down what you would like to sell in November, what your ultimate paycheck would be, and then um, how to maximize the last seven days. And we, we have a virtual opportunity event on Monday. So invite any of your friends who love to cook or bake or anybody who was laid off, their spouse was laid off, somebody who's looking for some more fun in their life, some more friends. Those are great people to invite to our virtual opportunity event. <laughs> something as simple as have you ever thought about doing something like this before I thought of you right away because I'd love to work with you would you be interested in being added to our virtual opportunity event that's happening Monday evening building a team is definitely how you make serious money in this business and it's so fun when you start to build a team it's fun to accomplish stuff for yourself so when people you know start to earn stuff that is the absolute best part Any questions for me? This is gonna be a big joke because I uh, I get to expand my Zoom package so we could do over 40 minutes and I don't think I've had a call over 40, 40 minutes since I bought the package. This is just gonna, this is gonna haunt me. Every call is gonna end at 39 minutes. <laughs> I'm so glad you guys were able to join in today. It's nice to see you on there, Julie. Yay, I get to see Julie for real. Yay. <laughs> Yeah, Ashley and Jennifer, all these ghosts that are on here without their cameras, we're, we're watching you. Thank you for sharing, Andrea. <laughs> How do you avoid Facebook jail? I don't know. Ask Jill. Because <laughs> <laughs> honestly, I got pretty darn close yesterday that if for messaging, I almost got blocked. Like, yeah, so luckily with messaging, it's okay because they'll give you a message and they'll be like, please slow down. You're going too fast. That's what it'll say. I believe that I've kind of worked it out that it's if you message over 65 people, like rapid fire, it'll say that. So message a few people, go and do something, message a few people. But the I only messaged like 50 people and then all of a sudden it was like, boom. I'm like, uh-oh, maybe I should not do that. <laughs> That's, I like that they're warning us on Messenger. Best way to, to avoid it when you're doing your parties is create a business page on Facebook if you haven't already. That's what I wanted to ask you. Should I go and message from the business page or use your own personal? You want to link them though. That's the really important step. Oh, I mine's linked, but week. I just didn't know if I should message saying it like from my business page or yeah. from my own personal account. I think it's okay to message from your own personal account. Oh, Genesis, she uses both. Yeah. Okay. You're, you're, it depends on who you're messaging, I guess. If it's somebody that is a business contact, you can message from your business page. And that's totally fine. And I don't think that'll change the answer either. And then when you're doing here, I'm just going to share my screen really quick. When you are linking, you want to make sure that you're posting your virtual parties from your business page. What that means is that you go under, let's see here. Okay. So Facebook is just changing every single day. We're just going to have to adapt. We're malleable. We can adapt to what they're doing every single day. But underneath your settings, you'll see this more button. All you have to do is go edit group settings. And then you'll see that there's a little button under here that says, 
uh, link your page. So I'm going to link my business page here. Look at me. I'm so naughty. I wasn't posting for my business page on my block party. I am now though. Link page. There we go. So all that means is that you'll see that now when I do my posts, instead of Andrea's sale, it'll come up as Andrea's pampered page is doing all the posts. So that's I do all my posts as my business page now. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, you shouldn't have to worry about jail, but again, you never know. Every day it changes. Um, I hope that we're all doing enough activity. It puts us all in jail because we're doing that many parties. Ha ha. I'm just kidding. I don't wish jail upon anyone. <laughs> this is my first time ever in how many years? Yeah, that's pretty. Cool. Yeah, but it, like honestly, there's no rhyme or reason. I just got sloppy this week and I was just posting too many things at the same time. Well, I got in Facebook jail back in August. I actually had to start a brand new Facebook account. <laughs> wow. Yeah, and it try and now my old one actually works, but I'm like everybody knows my new one's up, so I'm still trying to balance the two of them. <laughs> it's difficult. The funny part Very is if, knows, if, if they're your friends on both, they don't know. They have see a picture of you, they're like, oh cool. It's all good. Well, whoever's friends on my new one gets deleted off my old one, but then it's like I have so many that still, oh. it's a nightmare. <laughs> yeah. Well, I appreciate you guys' time today. If you think of any more questions, let me know. Or I got to write down what I was going to post for you guys on the team page. What was it? I remember. Thank you so much for your time, you guys. I really appreciate it. Let's have the biggest month ever. November is going to be massive. I know it. Thanks, guys. Talk to you soon.